First, let me just say thank you for being a member of my inner circle. You know, some of these things are goofy. You know, the Biden campaign won't commit to debate. The National Committee of the Democratic Party is not holding primary debates as Biden faces opposition from Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and Marianne Williamson. Let me be honest. I could not advise Biden to debate either one of them. He is massively ahead. He's going to be the nominee, assuming he can get there physically and mentally. There's no point in his subjecting himself to this kind of thing. Now, whether or not he's going to debate the Republican nominee is a different issue. And the White House currently or the campaign doesn't want to comment on it. And again, I don't blame him. I mean, first of all, if you watch Biden, for example, when he was in Maui, this is not a guy you want to put on a debate stage. I mean, whatever he got through four years ago, he is clearly weaker. His cognitive problems are clearly greater. And it's really a difficult situation. And I think there's a really good possibility we're going to get Kamala Harris as the Democratic nominee, just because it'll be so obvious that Biden couldn't serve four more years. But that's neither here nor there right now. The Department of Justice is trying to reach an agreement with TikTok, but it was one which would have granted the government control over the app. Candidly, I think that's about as bad as you can get. TikTok is now viewed by millions and millions of people. I don't think the United States government should control it. I think what they should do is require the TikTok's American operation be sold to an American company and operate inside the United States. The business jet transporting Jenny Prigazhin, the owner of the Wagner Group paramilitary organization, crashed northwest of Moscow, killing all 10 passengers aboard. Now, there's an argument going on in Moscow. The Kremlin says that Putin did not kill him. There's some thought that it may have been the head of the Russian military who hates him. Or, you know, Prigozhin is the kind of guy who has lots of different people who hate him. But it is a little strange that he led a rebellion against Putin on June 24th. They cut a deal. Putin had labeled Prigozhin as a traitor. And it's Putin's style to kill people that bother him. In addition, Putin is ruthless enough that if killing nine other people was necessary in order to kill Prigozhin, he didn't care. It's just sort of amazing. On the other hand, on the positive side, a Chinese dissident, American-educated Kuang Pyong, jumped on a jet ski last week and sped 250 miles across the LLC from China's eastern Shandong province to Incheon, South Korea, equipped with only a helmet, binoculars, a compass, and five 6.6-gallon fuel tanks tied to a small craft. To any of you who've ever done jet skis, can you imagine this? Now, there's a guy who really wanted freedom. And I can say on behalf of Joe Gaylord and my wife and all their friends in Iowa, they can be proud. Kwong Pyong attended Iowa State University. And, you know, once you've been in the Midwest and then you go back to China and you realize how much better life is in the Midwest, you can understand what happened. He participated in Hong Kong's pro-democracy protest in 2014, he had previously served jail time for various social media posts. He was an open critic of Xi Jinping, and I suspect he's going to become pretty famous. I think it's going to be fascinating. And remember, a lot of famous people who've criticized Xi Jinping are no longer in public. You don't know where they are. The Chinese have a system called disappeared. I like better the courage and the pursuit of freedom by Quan Biong. I frankly was not a big fan of Prigozhin, even when he was alive and in mutiny against Putin. These are bad people doing bad things. Lastly, I just have to say, the spectacle of the corrupt, partisan, left-wing, radical district attorney in Fulton County getting a mugshot of a president of the United States is about as despicable as it gets. More and more, I'm convinced that we have left the rule of law and entered the rule of power and that these people are willing to do virtually anything to get their way. And I think it is really, really bad. I should also say that I hope you will join us in the future. We'll have more inner circle meetings. I find they're very, very helpful to me. We get great questions and very interesting comments. And I hope you'll tell your friends that they too can join, and we'd love to have them join us. My new book, March to the Majority, is now a bestseller and is available at Amazon, and Barnes and & Noble, and retailers everywhere. Get it today by clicking on the link in the description below.